echocardiogram often called just echo in short is ultrasound imaging of the heart though the actual types and details mentioned in echo report may vary between institutions and even persons reporting it in general there are several common aspects reports of children with birth defects of the heart will have a different pattern this discussion is mainly on an echo report from a general cardiology setup rather than a specialized report in addition to details of identification and date of procedure reason for the test and the quality of images are usually mentioned in the beginning of the report quality of images may be poor in those with lung disease and in obese individuals finer details in the report should be interpreted with caution when the image quality is reported as poor or as poor echo window poor echo window means that good quality images were not obtained during the study this is common in those with chronic obstructive lung disease as the hyperinflated lungs overlap the heart in parasternal and apical echo windows in chronic obstructive lung disease when parasternal and apical windows are poor subcostal window is usually good the usual echo windows are the parasternal apical subcostal and suprasternal each window allows the imaging of certain cardiac structures lungs do not come in the way of the ultrasound beam in the subcostal view air in the lungs do not permit transmission of the ultrasound beam to the heart so the usual echocardiographic windows are regions where the overlap by the lungs is minimal chamber sizes and measurement of thickness of chamber walls are either given as tables or the relevant picture showing the measurements printed on the report in some reports reference normal values are also provided while looking at reports of children measurements should be interpreted considering the physical size of the child as heart chambers grow in size as the child grows while coming to function of the heart the concentration is often on the left ventricle which pumps blood to the whole body an important value in the report is the ejection fraction ejection fraction is the fraction of the blood from the full left ventricle which is ejected out during each contraction suppose after filling when the left ventricle relaxes in diastole it has 100 ml of blood If 70 ml is pumped out by the next contraction or systole the ejection fraction will be 70% an ejection fraction below 50% is considered below normal the lower the ejection fraction the poorer the pumping function of the heart a normal left ventricular ejection fraction is usually reported as good left ventricular function if it is severely impaired it is noted as severe left ventricular dysfunction when the left ventricle is stiff and relaxes poorly in diastole it is reported as left ventricular diastolic dysfunction left ventricular diastolic dysfunction is quite common as age advances another important aspect is the contraction of each region of the left ventricle if all regions of the left ventricle contracts normally it is reported as 
no regional wall motion abnormality if a particular region contracts poorly it is reported as hypokinetic a region which is not contracting at all is reported as akinetic sometimes a region might bulge out when all other regions are contracting such a region is called dyskinetic Any of the heart valves can also be abnormal either as a birth defect or acquired later in life due to diseases. If a valve is narrowed it is called stenosis. There can be mitral stenosis, aortic stenosis, tricuspid stenosis and pulmonary stenosis or a combination of these. leak in a valve is called regurgitation so there can be mitral regurgitation aortic regurgitation tricuspid regurgitation and pulmonary regurgitation or a combination of these there can also be stenosis and regurgitation in the same valve stenosis can be graded as mild moderate and severe depending on the severity area of the narrowed valve may be mentioned in certain cases regurgitation can be graded as trivial mild moderate and severe trivial regurgitation as the name implies are usually ignored especially in relation to the right sided valves pulmonary and tricuspid pressure gradients across the valves will be mentioned when the valve is narrowed the gradient increases as the severity of the narrowing increases when there is a leak in the tricuspid valve the pressure difference between the right ventricle and right atrium can be calculated this is usually mentioned as tr or tricuspid regurgitation gradient usually a nominal value of 10 is added to this gradient and mentioned as the estimated right ventricular systolic pressure or rvsp an elevated rvsp implies increased pressure in the pulmonary artery known as pulmonary hypertension if the pulmonary valve is not obstructed After the descriptive report and the measurements the final conclusion is usually reported at the end of the report in case of a normal adult study it may read as no regional valve motion abnormality good left ventricular systolic function regional valve motion abnormality may be written in short as rwma also if abnormalities have been detected the conclusion part will be larger and include the salient parts of the echo study for example in a person with a defect in the wall between the lower chambers it may read as congenital heart disease large perimembranous ventricular septal defect left to right shunt moderate pulmonary arterial hypertension good biventricular function this would mean that there is a large defect in the upper part of the wall between the two lower chambers and blood is leaking from the left ventricle to the right ventricle across the defect the pressure in the blood vessels of lungs have gone up due to the increased flow but the pumping function of both right and left ventricles are normal